Oh, wait, what's going on, guys? Yes, we're gonna project back at it again in here for the video for you guys for today. And then here, yes, my WWE TLC 2018 pay per view review, giving you my thoughts and opinions. And I'm gonna get right down into it with the kickoff, not wasting any much more time. When we had the Cruiserweight Championship match between Bunny Murphy and Cedric Alexander, I didn't really disappoint since I seen these two at WWE Bali for 205 Live and having their match there. So seeing it in person and then seeing it again at the WWE TLC, even though they also had a match at Super Showdown. So their feud, you know, has been really entertaining and even with their matches. So even though Cedric Alexander didn't win, but Buddy Murphy was able to retain his Cruiserweight Championship. And the next match just basically goes to show, which is pretty damn stupid as all hell, but that anybody can be on the kickoff and when we had a ladder match between Elias and Bobby Lashley the guitar was high above the ring it was really weird didn't really care for this match but Elias won and I thought when you actually got the guitar the match would continue basically didn't uh, Elias may have won but Bobby Lashley and Leah Rush got the last laugh so I'm sure things are gonna be continuing who knows we'll see at this point but didn't really care for this match too much. Then when we get into the main card for WTLC, and this one was a weird opener. I mean, I have been keeping up mixed match challenge. It's nice seeing it on Facebook, but seeing it, you know, on the main card for TLC kicking things off for the first match was kind of weird. Uh, we had the finals of the mixed match challenge, basically the winners of their respected Royal Rumbles basically you know we get to earn their shot at the Royal Rumble for their respective Rumble in the 30th entry and we had the Carmella and R-Truth taking on Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox basically uh, actually Carmella and R-Truth got the win which is fine and we got to see the dance break that was like the only cool thing there since Carmella has that going for her but that was really about it and also they got their chance to be uh, dealing with the uh, vacation and stuff so I don't know this whole season with Mix Match Challenge wasn't really as great as either since people were getting sick or injured or whatever have you a lot of shit getting changed a lot so it was kind of all over the place but now it's over done with and our truth will be in the men's world Rumble for the 30th entry spot and Carmella for the women's world Rumble will be in the 30th entry spot so there's that at least then when we get into what I thought was the real opener starter for the show for the SmackDown Tag Team Titles, Triple Threat Tag Team Action where we had the New Day, The Bar, and the Usos, and really great stuff back and forth between all the tag teams here and everything, and actually The Bar ended up retaining, so I'm curious to see where things are going to go. I know the tag team division has been kind of shit too lately. Uh, kind of both brands that uh, hopefully things would turn around since you know there are certain times when the tag team division can be really good then the other times it can be crap and pretty shitty so it all depends on where things are going to go but the bar have no problems with them winning and retaining in this one then we get into what was supposed to be a TLC match but of course Baron Corbin was able to try and deal with Braun Strowman he kind of did but he had some help since he has been injured lately and everything, so he was able to show up, but he had the arm brace and he had help with Kurt Angle. Bobby would have had Gable, the new World Tag Team Champions, which is crazy. And we had Finn Balor and a few others basically who've been really screwed and messed around with Baron Corbin. Of course, Braun Strowman was able to get the win and everything, so maybe now that Baron Corbin's basically out of commission for a raw general manager maybe Kurt Angle since he was able to be out there with the beatdown maybe he'll come back as well GM and have a proper legit general manager which would be better off seeing so hopefully that would happen since I know Mr. McMahon is looking to come back and everything and maybe have also as well a superstar shake up so there's that going for it and everything so who knows at this point then we get into the tables match between Ruby Riot and Natalia, and this one where we had, of course, the rest of the Riot squad with Liv Morgan 
and as well as Sarah Logan trying to get involved, but Natalia didn't want any of that. They both went through tables, and in the end, at least Natalia was able to get the win and everything, so that was nice, and it made sense so good for Natalia actually getting a damn payback, which was awesome to see. Then we get into where I think the pay-per-view actually started to pick up again. It's basically one of those pay-per-views where it starts off pretty shitty, but then it gets, you know, picked up and takes off from there. Where we had Finn Balor and Drew McIntyre going at it, and Finn Balor actually was able to get his win. And kind of with the help of Dolph Ziggler having his fair share problems with Drew McIntyre. So maybe we'll see something going with them since they had their altercation backstage and everything. So there's still some tension there, and it's supposed to have a matchup on Raw. So. We'll see how it goes and see what goes with them and for Drew McIntyre since I know I've been here and he's supposed to be having a big push and everything which is also well deserved so we'll see where it goes. Next we'll be having one of the bonus matches, we had the chairs match, Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton. I actually enjoyed this one between the two. We actually made the chairs match fun and it's pretty rare that we see an actually, you know, good enough cheers match so this was pretty interesting with these two, of course, having a lot of history and everything. Uh, Rey Mysterio kind of have it where it was a little bit like musical chairs towards the end and everything with his cool spot. And in the end, of course, Rey Mysterio was able to get the win. So we'll see what's next for those two. And hopefully, you know, maybe Rey Mysterio can get back to like the main event scene and everything. I'd like to see that going for him since he's been back. So we'll see um, what's up there. But... You kind of see the trend a little bit, like most of the faces ended up winning for the most part, so you know, it makes sense for TLC. Then when we have the WWE Championship match, new Daniel Bryan taking out AJ Styles. Definitely really enjoyed this match too, since we've seen it before and right now. This is, you know, the rematch for AJ Styles and everything. He's go going back at it uh, as well, these two, so uh, I like how, you know, Daniel Bryan is having, you know, kind of mind games a little bit and it seems like that he isn't going to really get the job done but you know like that he actually ends up you know either winning somehow somewhere and everything and that was the case here so i have a feeling we'll probably see a rematch at the world rumble which wouldn't be against that since i'm enjoying this food and everything so daniel Bryan was able to get the win and retain the wwe championship so this is pretty interesting there then when we have the Intercontinental Championship match between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. And this one was pretty crazy and where I thought Dean Ambrose had his chance to actually retain for Seth Rollins. Well, Dean Ambrose actually comes back and actually is now the new Intercontinental Champion. So, you know, his heel run is actually doing well. So, we'll see how these two are going to actually fully end things. I was hoping this would be a stipulation, at least the latter match. Or so, you know, that would have been fine for the Intercontinental Championship, so Dean winning here is uh, pretty interesting, so curious where things are going to go with him and everything, and I'm pretty sure him and Seth Rollins are definitely not done just yet. Then, of course, the main event, the TLC match, Asuka, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair, and all three women basically pulling out all the stops. we seen the table spot, they, of course, the Kendall stick had to come into play, the chair shots and everything, and yes, we did get to see, of course, Ronda Rousey get her chance to actually be in the match and actually having basically payback. So, with the shake up, I kind of see Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch going to Raw to finish things up with Ronda, so that could happen, and of course, actually helping out Asuka. So, there's also that that happened, and yes, Asuka is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. So. And of course, you know, we did get to see beforehand with Ronda Rousey, Nia Jax, of course, Ronda Rousey ended up getting her win and retaining her Raw Women's Championship. So, uh, basically, two new champions basically crowned at TLC and everything. So, you know, it was okay at best. I mean, it was one of those shows, like, it started off bad, but then it ended up getting a little bit more better towards the end. I kind of hate that trend. And we see that throughout 2018, so, you know, TLC was okay at best. Those are my opinions. Those are my thoughts. What are your own? Leave it in the comment box, and we'll talk about it well after the video is up. 
continue to subscribe and as well hit the notification bell for all my other videos and hopefully you guys enjoy your holidays with Thanksgiving hopefully you enjoyed that and Christmas coming up and as well the New Year's got the fireplace basically there and the TV with the music and everything else so just to add that Christmas feeling and everything and of course I'll most likely be back for January 6th for your Jubilee Fable it's gonna be awesome for the house show and until then again what are your thoughts on TLC and I'll see you guys soon whatever the hell the next video may be until then see ya Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays